fire was the initial and literal spark of civilization, and human beings' control over it elevated us to a new level in the game of evolution. Fire provides warmth, shelter from the elements, it provides a way to cook food and make water drinkable, it provides illumination from the darkness, and it also provides us security from predators. It provides us a shield for the bears, wolves, and the cats that have preyed upon humankind for millennia. And by a fire's presence, you can sleep more soundly when you're deep in the wild. One of the first ways people tend to die in a survival scenario is through exposure, through hypothermia. So firecraft is among the most primary of survival skills. Having the tools, tinders, fuel, and methods to make fire should be a priority for any aspiring survivalist. In order to make fire, you need a few things. An ignition source, a good reliable tinder to catch a spark, oxygen to keep the fire going, and kindling and a constant fuel source to feed the fire. This is a complete fire kit that I have built for my vehicle. On the right we have our ignition sources, matches and stormproof matches, a flint and steel, an everyday Bic lighter, an arc lighter, and a ferrocerium rod and magnesium striker. On the left we have our tinders, such as the fat rope stick, the fast fire stick, a candle, and last but certainly not least, one of the best fire starters on earth in my opinion, the ultimate fire tinder. Watch till the end of the video where I discuss in great detail this exceptional tinder. Other things you may want to consider for your fire kit are a pocket bellows or a Fresnel lens. All of these have their pros and cons, for instance, Ferro rods and magnesium strikers. These are the most robust and durable. You'd never have to worry about them getting wet and they're going to last a long, long time. They can, for the most part, never be broken. Matches, on the other hand, are one of the easiest ways to make fires, especially in challenging conditions, especially if you get the ones that are waterproof and windproof and can burn at high intensity. These can, however, degrade over time and get destroyed. Thus, they are not the most reliable. A typical everyday Bic lighter, preferably a barbecue lighter, this is going to allow you to reach deep into the nest of your tinder bundle, which will be helpful in windy and rainy conditions. These are the easiest to use, but they are prone to breaking and running out of fuel. A flint and steel. This is one of the most challenging methods and requires the most skill, but like a ferro rod, it is the most reliable. An arc lighter. This is one of the most high-tech and modern options, but it's also among the most vulnerable to breakage. The upside is that it can be recharged indefinitely via solar. So, so long as you can keep it from breaking down, this could be the ignition source which does last the longest. Lastly, are friction fire methods like the Baudrill method. I would encourage anybody who wants to learn about the Baudrill method to get yourself one of these pre-made kits off Amazon. It will teach you the core motor skills involved in the process. This will get you familiar with the concept and give you the confidence you need to try the real thing. As for tinder, you can use a variety of things as tinder. For example, fat wood is harvested from the junctions of old pine trees. I've done a how-to video on this before that you can see here. Fat wood is saturated with a substance called pine resin, which is very flammable. Although it does require some searching, once you find it, it'll prove well worth the work. Birch bark, grass, old man's beard, and other natural tinders will work just fine. If you can't find any of the aforementioned, you can always feather stick any piece of dry wood to a fine enough feather that it will catch a spark. There are also a variety of homemade tinders you can make. Many people make these out of Vaseline and cotton balls. I personally don't like this method too much because I do find it kind of messy, but if you're on a budget, this is a good option. Some people also use dryer lint, but once again, I personally can't stand the smell of dryer lint burning. Maybe it's just me. I would also advise keeping a candle in your fire kit in case you're running low on ignition sources. This will give you more chances at creating that precious fire. I have tried every possible tinder there is to offer, but the best I have found by far is the ultimate fire tinder. I'm going to talk about this in more detail in just a minute. Now as for a fuel source, your primary fuel source is going to be wood. You need to make sure that the wood is dead and dry. This will be challenging in winter when trees may look dead, but they're actually just sleeping and the trees have shed the leaves for the season. An easy way to determine if a tree is alive or dead is to look up to the top of the tree. If you've seen a lot of fine 
secondary and tertiary branches extending out from the main trunks of the tree. You can bet that that tree is probably still alive, or at least alive enough that it's going to be hard to burn. And the last tip is to make sure you have all your kindling ready to go so you're not scrambling once your fire is ignited. Now as for the ultimate fire tinder, as I said before, I have tried every possible fire tinder that the market has to offer. If you don't believe me, you can go check out my arc lighter review here where I demonstrate all these types of tinder being used. The ultimate fire tinder by far is the easiest and most exceptional fire tinder that I have ever used. It's so flammable that it will work even after being completely soaked in water. But just because it's flammable doesn't mean it's going to burn up right away. You still get exceptional burn times with this material. It's made of a proprietary blend of accelerants, waxy compounds, and sawdust. And it's made right here in Canada by a friend of mine who lives in Quebec who spends all his time in the forest trying to perfect firecraft. He's worked very hard over the years to make fire making easier and more modern. And I'm very proud to say that of all the fire tinders on the market, which are mass produced and mass marketed, he makes the best stuff hands down. He's created products like the fat rope, the fire strip roll, fire plugs, and the waxwood stick. The latest product that he's made here is arguably the best he's ever released and the best fire starter I've ever used to date. Just a pinch of this tinder can help you get a fire going and from one bag, you could easily get 100 fires if you ration it right. The great thing about it is the ease of use. Many fire starters on the market are going to require some sort of fluffing or cutting or mincing, and they're not going to take a spark exceptionally well, especially after they're wet. This, however, is plug and play. You pull it out of the bag and you light it. It is by far and away the best emergency fire starter if you had to in a pinch get somebody warm really fast it's very easy for you to determine how much of the stuff you want to use you could even use the whole bag if you were in a situation where the wood was very wet and you needed a fire right away this stuff because it's already pre-shedded it makes itself very easy to use in a pinch and it lends itself to many different types of fire configurations so if you want to check out this amazing product, I would encourage you to go through the description in the comment section below. And of course, you can always use the coupon code Survival Prepper for 10% off. Now, let's chill for a few minutes with some Firecraft ASMR. Let's get to it. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com. 
The best quality products at the best prices. Use discount code SURVIVALPREPPER, all caps, all one word, for 10% off. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.